the topic is well gas osteotomy for femoral neck uh, non-union technical tricks by Professor Suthorn Bhavon Latanavet. Professor, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Co-Chairman. Uh, my topic will be on this vulgus osteotomy of the femoral neck non-union. And I believe that this is some non-union that you don't want to have it. So this is the case. I show you the age of the patient and also how long that you have this non-union. The learning outcome, number one, is the, what is the cost of femoral neck non-union and how you should avoid it. Who needs this operation? And actually, there's only one option, I have to say, in this uh, non-union in young patient, this is the Walker's osteotomy, whether you believe it or not. There are many arguments from those who don't know what is this. And I will describe some surgical technique for the classical. This is the classical one, with the originally described by Maurice Muller and Reiho Gangs. <coughs> so if you look to all of this x-ray, you can imagine right, that it will end up with some non-union, definitely. So do it right the first time. And if there is a fair operative treatment, don't wait. It will never unite. You, tr you should do early revision, which is absolute necessary. Now, for those of you who haven't heard about this operation, I think actually it's been published long ago. And I want to show you the result of this uh, publication. This is Professor Rennie Marty who published this paper. He's also the, one of the past president of the AO Foundation. He reported a case of uh, non-union 148 case, and he did Walker's osteotomy in 70 cases, in average age as I shown. Now, the result of the 66 case, which is follow up very long, he can achieve union of the femoral neck 88%. Osteotomy site that I will show you, in every case is 100% heal, good and excellent result, 62%. Of course, uh, most of these cases have some degree of a vascular necrosis. You can't change anything about this. However, I want to emphasize that uh, some cases have no problem, 37%. Uh, some cases need uh, total hip, which is delay, you know, from the 9 years to even 27 years. Now, who need this kind of surgery? Number one is the patient factor. If the, pa if the patient is below 40 years old, I will always try to do this, but about 40 to 60, you may have to judge whether you really need to do this or you want to jump to arthroplasty. You can check on that. If the patient still have active lifestyle, no chronic disease, long life expectancy, I think we should give him a chance to preserve the natural hip. Now, what about the femoral head factor? Uh, I consider if the head still round, no segmental collapse is okay. If there is an area about three to four centimeter, I think that is good enough to fix. This is not a contraindication whether you have seen AVN, there's no neck osteoporosis, or some case with fail fixation. If it's not eroded uh, into the acetabulum, I think this is, should be considered to do auto, uh, uh, osteotomy. What about the surgeon factor? I think this is probably the main issue. Does the surgeon believe that this surgery will treat non-union? Does he have the courage to do this, which is maybe difficult if you're first case? There are many opposition ideas about this operation. First, uh, they believe that if you do osteotomy, it will be difficult to do total hip, which is not true. Uh, and the surgeon said, oh, this is just one operation with the total hip. But if in the young patient, you have to think about that maybe uh, many revision. I can only do total hip. He doesn't know about this operation. And why? If I don't know how to do why I have to refer to other patients. I think this is uh, unethical, in my opinion. Actually, this is the operation that you can learn how to do if you follow step by step. I think everybody can do. It's not an excuse to do total hip if you can save the natural hip. And usually, the non-union will be unite, but you cannot chain AVN. This is something you have to be keep in mind. However, the early uh, do, do revision, the, the better prognosis to the patient. So I will describe about the classical Walker's osteomy, start with the pre-op planning, how I do. And if this is my first case, you have to understand that the resultant force on the hip is 16 degree plus 9 degree of the axis, or mechanical axis. So you have to remember this number. 25 degree, that means this is subject to uh, perpendicular to the resultant force. 
So if you have any shearing fracture, like in this case, you have a fracture ankle like this, you have to chain into the 25 degree. Otherwise, the shearing force will never unite your fracture. Now, in every case before you do operation, you have to measure this ankle. And the calculation is by having this ankle minus 25, that is corrective ankle, right? Like in this case, if you measure 75, that means you have to do the ostomy of 50 degree. So this is actually uh, the case, my first case long ago, 1984. This is the patient uh, x-ray, like this. The implant has been removed, and this is the x-ray when the patient came to me in 1984. And what shall I do? Right? I just been back from the hip course in Bern, and I have listened to what uh, Rai Hong Gangs and uh, Maurice Muller present. So I first do traction film. I said, oh, this is possible that I can do something. After presenting the case in the conference, this is the comment from a senior surgeon. You know, what did she say? She said, you are not Professor Gangs. I don't believe that you can do it. I want to emphasize to everybody also, you don't need to be Dr. Sutton in order to do this. And I believe that there are many surgeons today that can do this procedure. Now, this is the case post-op. Walker's osteotomy, 30 degree. I want to emphasize to you that uh, how the nature has been healed this fracture. You see, this is the gap. And on the follow-up of six months, this gap is filled with bone graft. I actually do not put the bone graft because there's, you see the blade. I cannot put from the posterior. I can only put some chip graft in front. So I think this is a, a very amazing that you can correct this. Now, let's come to how you do the operation. This is the case of 23 years old, garden four. And you can see it's complete displacement, a power of three at least. What is your concern, right? This kind of fracture is very difficult because of the shearing component, as I have shown you. And this is one year after fixation. The patient uh, come back to see the surgeon every month, but she received only calcium. And then after that, one year, the, the, the surgeon said, oh, I have to do total hip replacement. And she was shocked because she's only 23. Uh, if you analyze, you can say, oh, this is a poor reduction, the implant is not correct, wrong angle to screw, wrong orientation, a lot of mistakes. And the most important is the poor judgment on follow-up. This surgeon should decide that she needs revision early, not waiting for one year. It's too much. So as the surgeon told that we need to do total hip, and she said, no, I don't believe that in 23 years old, you should jump to the total hip. So I recommend her to do Walker's osteotomy. Now, let's look uh, step by step. Number one, you, you calculate the angle, which is 55 degree, you minus 25, that means you need a 30 degree wedge, right? To change the angle from 55 to 25. <coughs> this is a template. So you draw the fracture line, in this case 55, and then you know that this axis of the femur, to correct 30 degree is the most easy to understand. So you put the guy pin 90 degree, like this. And from this guy pin 90 degree, you check x-ray in AP and lateral. And then you hammer in your chisel, like this, following the guy pin. You make a window, and then you hammer. Uh, this is an instrument, but probably some of you, with you young, especially the young surgeon, you never see this. Right? This is the chisel and the angle guy that you use this with the slot hammer in order to hammer this chisel in. Now, we use 120 degree side plate. Uh, if you have a cannula chisel, that means a bit, uh, make it more easy to do this. So after putting the chisel, you need a space of two centimeter to create the wedge of 30 degree. Right? You remove the wedge, but leave uh, the medial hinge. After that, you take out the chisel, you insert the side plate first, you insert the plate, the, the chisel first, don't break the bone yet. Otherwise, you got rotation of everything. So remove the bone wedge, but you leave one centimeter hinge. And after that, you insert the angle blade with 120 degree. And after you insert this blade, you take out the wedge and you, you discontinue the medial hinge and gradually abduct, right? So simple mathematics is you hammering 90 degree, you use 120 degree, so you achieve 30 degree correction. But you have to remove the weight of 30 degree. So this is how the calculation, in case you need more than 30 degree, 
then you have another additional angle above this perpendicular pin, right? For example, this is uh, 75 degree, you want to have a 50 degree correction, then you add another 20 degree above the perpendicular pin. So the surgical technique is on the normal operating table. I set the C-arm like this, so you can have AP lateral. It's just a lateral approach. So when you open up, I remove the screw in this case, and then I put the pin, which is 90 degree, AP lateral, I hammering the chisel, like this, and after that, two centimeter down, this is how you make the window. You need to make a window for the shoulder of the imp uh, implant. You see, <clears throat> you need two centimeter. If it's too short, you can create another fracture. So after inserting the chisel, and then re you replace by the plate, you take out the wedge of this 30 degree, like this. And after that, you complete the hinge immediately, you abduct. Abduct the leg, never push the plate down because the bone is too soft. You have to abduct the leg. So once you abduct, this is how you correct it, okay? So now you change from 55 degree to 25 degree. And this is a two month, four month, one year follow up. The fracture unite. Unfortunately, she developed AVN gradually, but it took almost nine years before we have to do the total hip. I show this case to you because for total hip, after Valkas osteotomy, it's not a problem. You can insert this prosthesis, right? So there's no problem to do that. Now, let's look at another case. He's 19 years old. The screw broken, one year. The same calculation. This is 65 degree. So we want to make a correction more. However, because of the screw, you know, the broken screw is in the way. So we can only achieve this, not the optimal angle, However, in one year follow-up, the fracture unite both uh, the neck of the femur and also as the osteotomy. And this is how the function of the patient. Uh, I never see the patient complain of the leg length discrepancy because when you correct it in this valgus, I think he have a, a good motion, right? This is another case, interesting, 35 years old. Actually, she was uh, at planned to do the arthroplasty, but I said, can you keep it to me? I want to try whether it works or not. And you see in this case, you don't have any femoral neck. Actually, there are some signs of vascular necrosis already. So the same operation was done, 30 degree, and this is a five year follow up. She's still fine. Of course, this is 30 years ago. I don't know what's happened to her now. Maybe something. This is another case. 32 years old, t 10 months after injury, without any treatment. And you can see that there are already some uh, cystic, uh, no neck. And this is how the surgery has been done. And again, amazing, you see how the bone is uh, developing, right? So this, this is something that if you don't see the case, you don't believe it, that this kind of operation can treat uh, the patient uh, in this femoral neck fracture. The last one is this 36 years old. If you look at the three screw fixation, there's a lot of mistake. No reduction screw, it's short, there's no triangle, it's just... And in fact, in the second month, you already see the screw bending. Again, the surgeon said, okay, wait. And this is what happened four months. Now, you have more difficult because you have two screw broken, right? You can remove uh, the, another part of the screw, but you cannot remove these two. And this is 75 degree, so this is the correction. Uh, I have to, to do halfway inserting the chisel, and luckily it can go through these uh, two broken screw. And this is 50 degree of collection, and in six months post-op, the fracture unite. So in summary, this operation is amazing, and usually successful if you follow the surgical step. Everybody can do. You go step by step, as I try to, to point out in this uh, lecture, and there are many literatures worldwide to support from different order around the world. It's the treatment of choice for non-union of femoral necks in young active patient, and please do not jump to atroplasty. I have seen many cases when the patients see some of the atroplasty surgeons, they just say, oh, I don't know about Walker's osteotomy. I only do total joint replacement. I think this is not fair to the patient. And as the surgeon, I think you should explore all options and select the best possible method for the patient. If you do not know how to do, then refer to someone or learn how to do it. It's not as difficult, but I try to, to explain to you step by step. Because everybody should have more or less the first case to do, 
but you should have a courage in order to do this because this is the good procedure. Uh, and I believe now a day every region uh, at least uh, has a surgeon who can perform this operation. So thank you very much for your attention.